Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my uh, Destiny 2 Nightfall commentary video. Uh, this week's Nightfall is the Pyramidium and I'm doing it on the Storm Call of Warlock. Um, pretty, pretty usual setup. Better Devils, Primary, Mananan for my uh, energy. I, I always nearly say special. I'm not getting involved in, I'm not getting embroiled in the, <laughs> the weapon thing. You know, bring back specials. Hashtag, where's my special? Uh, <laughs> I, I am gonna, I, I am gonna speak about it in another video. Uh, so stay tuned for that video as I try and make sense of all that stuff. But uh, it's, it's, I'm using the Suros Classical Rocket Launcher as well. That's, that's on Void. Uh, obviously, because, because I'm using Stormcaller, I've got Crown of Tempests, getting that ability regeneration uh, boost for arc ability kills. It's always a good thing. Now, what I try and do here, my strategy on this first section is very simple. I try and get the plates activated as efficiently as possible, uh, just jumping up and down. I know where the ads are going to come from, and once I've activated both plates, I'm going to kind of hang about the centre area, hang about the centre area until the yeah, the two sets of uh, major, I think they are major goblins are down, and then the rest of the ads, the two yellow bar harpies, two two ultra harpies, and the rest of the X. They will come to me, they'll all bunch up, and I'll finish them all together. So, that's kind of the strategy here. I always do it the same way. The only harp you've really got to worry about is the one on the left-hand side. Because of where you are, it gets a good a, a good view of you. Uh, and the thing with these harpies, now you might have the problem sometimes that they disappear, run away, go and split up. It's because they can't see you, and if they can't see you, they'll keep moving until they can get a view on you. That's why you go here, you can stay in cover while they can still see you. Now this next section, I've 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 done this strike, not even not even nightfall. I've done it as a strike, and a lot of people have struggled getting past this next section, especially on your spiral. And for time wise, you need to get it past it on your spiral. So, what we're going to do is make sure when you get down to that first section, if you took any damage of your spiral, change out, get a new spiral. Go through the next section. Once you get to the channel, this you drop down into your channel. Boost right off the edge, and as soon as you're off the edge, turn, break, and then left bumper before you hit the floor. Do the same thing. You don't have to boost onto the next platform. Just right off, and before you hit the ground, boost, and then, uh, sorry, right shoulder, left shoulder, whichever one, and then boost into the first section of the lasers. Don't keep boosting. Just boost till you get to the first one, then just without boosting, just maneuver past the rest of them, and you'll be good. So make sure you're braking for the first platform you come off of. As soon as you leave the platform, brake, turn your spiral so it's sideways so that you don't fly forward. And then just before you hit the ground, left bumper. And then just ride off without boosting, ride off onto the next one and do the same thing, left or right bumper. to It, it stops you taking fall damage, basically. <clears throat> and then do the same to the next platform and then boost off that one to the very bottom platform keeping yourself in line with the first entrance and then once you get to that entrance don't take your finger off the boost and just maneuver past the rest of them so now we're at this second section this is basically about suppressing the orange bars the majors with grenades now there's two there's a, I put normally put a grenade on the, the first set of goblins and then I just grenade rocket the rest of the ads uh, Make sure before you before you head down to the bottom section, take the sniper out. And as you can see, I've suppressed all the all the ads. All the ads are dead. This ad because because I know I've got heavy ammo, and I always like to have a couple of rounds of heavy ammo. I plan my heavy ammo shots out around what's there. I know I'm going to drop one from him. I knew I had ones here. I'll put a grenade to suppress and a rocket to the right, and that that will help me deal with some of those now. My grenade wasn't great, and my second grenade wasn't great. Uh, but this is kind of what I always do. I always pop my super on on the warlock. I try and get a super off around this area. Sometimes, if I've if, if I've hit my grenades, I'll keep the super and go after the vex for my super. Uh, my setup for my subclass, I always take the top tree. I don't bother with arc soul because I'm not going to be standing in my I'm not going to be standing in my rift for too long. I'd rather have my grenades chaining damage. The, old, the other thing you get with that is obviously, as you'll have noticed, uh, you can teleport whilst in your super, which can can help. Now, once you take all these taken out, make sure you've got two. Make sure you remember you've got two snipers 
up on the the, the, the rear of the the, the real left uh, as you can see they're up up on top of a up on top of a little plat platform the platform they're on top of is the best place to go to take the vex because there is cover you can have and, and you've got the high ground any time you can have the high ground with cover why wouldn't you take it you know and making sure you've got grenades and, and i say this quite a lot when i'm playing with people and when i'm doing stuff it's always better for ads to spawn into grenades you know it's always better if you can start the damage off on the ads from the minute they land in so don't be scared to get rid of those grenades into the areas they're going to spawn now this next section this next section can be done a number of different ways the way i do it i th i think is the most efficient so clear all the ads you'll see the way i'm clearing them you'll get an idea of where they spawn and then once i've cleared all the ads i i go up to the left i clear the the taken knight and the goblins once but i do not activate that left hand plate depending on which plates you activate first depends on what ads you spawn in so if anybody that's done this and they've, they've activated the left plate first you'll know not only do you spawn the regular ads the knights and the goblins and all those but you also spawn two taken centurions so what to do is clear all the ads go past the left hand plate and you'll spawn in the two taken knights and the taken goblins and then activate the plate furthest the furthest away plate by the time you get to the second plate all you'll have to deal with is one taken centurion and some some uh, taken scions then you can go back to the plate on the left because you've activated both the other the other two plates you can go back to there they'll just be yellow bar knights some goblins and you're done if you can get to that plate once you activate that plate up at the top if you can get to the plate that's that's to the left or to the right sorry as you come in that little plate down on the right so you've gone the plate furthest away by the time you get to that plate on the right which will be the left as you're running to it uh the taken goblin will be coming in you can put a grenade as i say always better to have always better to have uh have a grenade on them when they spawn in I, as you'll have seen there as well now i i throw a grenade down the bottom left there i hit those goblins because there's an exploding barrel there and it will take them out very quickly an exploding box and as the got the the taken knight exploded the box right in front of me it nearly got me i like it. you know it's a pity because i use that for when i'm attacking the the captains normally because the explosive barrel explosive shield you get my drift so we activate this plate because now we won't get a Taken Centurion here. We'll have to deal with the Taken Centurion that's going to spawn at the next, just down to the left here. This one here. So I'll have a grenade from you spawn into. And then I'll hit him with a rocket. I've got another grenade. And there your Taken Centurion's gone. There's no big fight. You know, and there'll be, you've got the sounds there. You've got the sounds that'll come down from here. Get that chained lightning. Now all you've got to do is from the comfort of all the way back here, you can already start suppressing the ads up there without taking too much damage. Very, very simple strategy. And that's, if you, anybody that's done this knows that you get, you do get two taking goblins always on this level somewhere that will, that will def protect each other. It doesn't matter. Hit them with a grenade. Once they start getting bumped with a grenade, they will most of the time there are times it doesn't happen but most of the time they will release from from and, and get damaged by the by the grenade so you can choose to fight these or you can choose to get past them i knew i was going to be tight for time because it's the warlock and the end strat is probably the hardest i think because he has to rely on the cover that disappears every now and again this section here i take all the ads out you know, you don't have to on the Hunter, and you don't have to on the Titan, because the Titan can just pop his super and run past. But the Warlock, y you kind of, you run the risk of the the, the 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 Wizard. You run the risk of the Wizard sending those uh, solar shots after you, which will track you. Uh, so I always take them out, plus it gets me another brick of heavy if I need it. Uh, make sure that you, you do something about this Taken Knight, because this Taken Cabal, because... He will, uh, he'll mess you up. And the way I get past these is I almost time it as if I'm going to run into the, 
run into one of the lasers. You know, it needs to be just passing me as I'm going past it, and then you don't get hit by the other one. So the strategy here is, there's four confluxes. I will clear this first conflux uh, with grenades. I'll kill the snipers. There's two yellow, there's two orange bar majors in front of me. There's two orange bar majors over the other side. Uh, I'll clear those. I'll activate this conflux here in front of us, but I won't jump down and activate the other one first. Now, this strategy didn't go this time, didn't go according to plan, but I'll explain to you what the strategy is. The reason it didn't go according to plan is because the major, the major's over the other side of the bridge, they decide to run away. And it does happen sometimes. You have to be aware. Uh, I thought he'd come back. He didn't. Those over there on that bridge there's two taken two taken centurions uh they'd backed away but they kept coming backwards and forwards so i ended up focusing on those and not the ads that spawn in at the bottom of the slope as you're at the slope as you're running out of the area towards the teleporter that's where that's where the two taken minotaurs and all the goblins they all spawn in at the bottom of there if you can get a grenade and a rocket on top of those while they're there you make the second half of this area so simple you know because you basically you've just got to clear the conflicts after that so once you once you activate this area again something i didn't do once you activate this next area so i'm i've activated it now yeah you see the taken the snipers have spawned in that means that the the ads have all spawned in that's where they spawn right over there so I have put a grenade, I have put a rocket, but unfortunately the two taken minotaurs got away. Uh, once you've done that, what I didn't do, till, and I realised just uh, you know in about two or three minutes, then go down and activate that conflux that's below us. But I didn't, I chose to clear the areas. Clear the two confluxes as fast as you can. Uh, as you can see, the taking if you can hit the goblins. I mean, the good thing about if you can if you can clear at least the goblins, then the the taking minotaurs aren't shielded, so that you know they're right for the taking. Uh, yeah, and that that's really it with this area. Make sure that you clear, you know if you can get a grenade and a rocket at the bottom of that slope in front of us when they're spawning, and you'll see the blight spawning them in, uh, and it's all good. This was probably. Uh, it took me about five, five or six attempts, I think, to do this, to get this solo, uh, because I, I'm not a big fan of the warlock. My titan was really quick and it was flawless. I had one death on the warlock, but this was my slowest time. And when I when I got past this area, I was like, Ugh, I'm not going to be able to do this because I've struggled. But the reason I struggled was, and as it will become evident when, when we get to the end, it's about how you attack the boss, and I wasn't attacking the boss correctly. I remedied it, you know, I, I, I fixed it, I, I tweaked my, the way I was dealing with it, and even though I died, I, we still got it done, you know, and a clear's a clear, as they say, you know, I'm not, I'm not too fussed about not flawlessing the warlock, you know, it would have been nice to have total flawless this week, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't normally bother putting three solo videos up a week, but I figure, why not? Because there's three subclasses and not everybody plays on the subclasses that I'm focusing on. So, as you can see, we're just a little under 8 minutes. By the time we drop down, we're going to be about 7 minutes 40, 7 minutes 35, 7 minutes 40. That was my slowest time. I got here with over 9 minutes uh, and couldn't get it, could, couldn't nail it down. And the reason I couldn't nail it down is because I was trying to hit him with grenades and rockets instead of the floor so lesson learned i still do it at the start of this boss battle and then i fix it and that's why he takes the damage he takes so first area i'm going to put a grenade down i'm going to pre-bake a grenade in front of him so that by the time he gets up he's taking damage and i've got another grenade to throw at him i don't bother with a rocket he does tag me uh but I don't bother because I know that the two grenades was enough. And then I, I normally try and put a grenade into that area. Because I didn't... Because I got tagged. 
I wasn't thinking like that on this one, but the second run I do. So what I do now is I've, I've put my rift down. I'll suppress with the grenades. If I can get some kills with the grenades, which you will get kills with the grenades, uh, it will then proc the Tempest's uh, perk, and you can now start. It's like a day at the circus. You can just start throwing grenades for fun. Now, another thing, when I first started solo and stuff, I used... I was wondering why, how people could get past this part without, you know, dying. Because I used to die a lot coming past here, and it's very simple. Wait till he snipes and then run. <laughs> Don't run if he hasn't sniped, because he won't miss you. Unless you've got shoulder charge, and you can... And even now the shoulder charge doesn't do that. Uh, or you can go invisible. The Warlock has no way of avoiding his snipes. So make sure... Make sure after you've cleared both areas, you'll run at the next plate. Make sure you wait till he sniped, then run. Then run right up to the wall that I'm up against. If you're up tight to it, he can do whatever he wants. He won't hit you. Your job is to get him down to just about the end of his first health bar. Okay, as you can see, he's moved. I put a grenade. Even though he's there, he's now still taking damage. What I do with the Minotaurs... I always used to have a problem with the Minotaurs till I realised that my grenades weren't enough to take down the Minotaur. So I hit me a rocket now. <laughs> that that seems to do the job. So, you know, I put a rift down on the edge so I can keep going backwards and forwards and getting my health back. And then, you know, just suppress the rest of the goblins. Try and get the, try and get the Tempest, which is something I like to do. Obviously, I want to get the Tempest proking as often as possible. The next set of ads won't spawn until you've activated the plate and just suppress them from this side. You know, I've got a Void Scout. So once I've done that, I'll get the Void Scout out and try and get the explosive damage on, you know, taking the shield away. It's always good for damage. Now I know that he's fired his, he's fired, he's fired his flames. I'm going to get a snipe and then I'm going to go. It's, it's very simple and... I know that he'll only hit me once before I get round here and cover. I'm going to put exactly the same thing. This next, once he comes off the, once he comes off his plate, that's that's when it gets difficult. That's when I die because the the cover disappeared just as I put. I was I knew the cover was going to disappear. I wanted to get a rift down to get full health before I ran to the next cover, and just as I put my rift down, he he fired his flames at me, and then the cover disappeared. So I, there was I, there was nothing I could do about it. So as I say, I, I'll, I'll keep I'll keep saying it. It's always a good thing on here. You always want them to spawn into damage. All damage is good damage. Make sure you're taking the ads down. The ads can group up, and you can end up you can end up taking damage from all areas. You know, I'm not in a great place for cover, but as long as I can suppress the ads, the the covers. You know, the covers for him. I don't want to be t I don't want to be dealing with him. So if I can sub cover, get myself cover from him, I can take the ads out before they can do much serious damage to me anyway. Uh, because I've got the Crown of Tempests, like I keep saying, I'm procking, I'm procking the ability. You know, I'm getting grenades back pretty rapidly. Normally, normally I would run, I would run, uh, I would run. Uh, uh, arc, an arc scout rifle, but because nearly all the ads here were void, that's it would have been better to have the arc scout rifle than than the void one. To be fair, now you'll see I do this a few times. I think he's gonna the minute I fire, he moves, and I'm still trying to hit him. These first couple, I'm trying to hit him uh, with with rockets instead of the floor. It's the floor I should be aiming for, the floor in front of him, because even if he moves, he's still going to take damage. As you can see, I'm starting to learn, starting to starting to remember. Uh, now, I know the cover's going to go. That's why I keep looking around. You know, I want that, there we go. I want that next set of cover, because I'm close. You know, close. And, and this is the cover I don't like coming to, because, you know, it'll disappear, and I'll be... I'll be left out in the open. Make sure you're taking your ad, your ads out. They're, 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 it's quite important to keep to keep a decent as free from ads. As you can see, there you go. 
I've put my I've put my rift down and just as I've done it, I couldn't come at my animation. The cover disappeared, the the fire took me out. If that hadn't have happened, this would be a flawless run. Yeah, so in this section you need to keep going from you need to keep an eye out for the for, for the cover changing. Hit the floor with rockets and grenades in front of them and keep your super. Remember when you're in your super you, you will still generate a grenade. So that's kinda that's kinda what you're wanting to do. I'm wanting to drop grenades in front of him. I knew he was gonna be I knew he wasn't gonna run away there. And this is where you want to end up. The reason I fired the rocket at him is because he was in his animation to fire flames at me. He wasn't gonna move. This this now, because of the how much damage he's got, how much health he's got left, how much damage I've done, this cover's not gonna disappear. I know I can stay here, pop my super, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and entice him. I want to entice him. I want to bring him up here and I want him to slam the floor to try and kill me. And then I just back away so he can't do anything. It just keeps him from hitting me, but it keeps him in the same place. And we got the kill. And there it is, guys. The most annoying character to solo this week's Nightfall. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the commentary, guys. I always like doing a bit of commentary for you, especially on a difficult subclass. Uh, if you have, give it a like and I'll see you in the next one.